first thing you want to do is have a good meal, have a nice lunch on the first day in the city. And restaurant 34 in the neighborhood just behind our hotel on the Corso we found is an excellent place to eat. And then after lunch we take a stroll and one of the first stops on our itinerary is Giolitti's with some of the best ice cream in the world. It's gelato, it's thick and rich and creamy and delicious. Gelato is always served a bit soft, so the flavors come bursting through. Next stop is the Pantheon, one of the great old buildings from about 2,000 years ago, right in the heart of Rome. And just a few blocks away is the Piazza Navona, the outdoor living room of the city. Nearby is Sant'Ignazio, with its fabulous ceiling murals by Pozzo. We've taken you to these places previously in our more in-depth tours of Rome. So for today, we're just kind of skipping through. This is a summary of our tour. We're going to take you all the way from Rome to London. In the first half hour, we're going to take you from Rome to Venice as we drive down the main shopping street of the city, which is the Via del Corso. But we're not driving. We're on the city bus. With Hawaii Geographic, we like to travel sometimes as the locals do to get a real feeling for the place viewing the Aria Sacra, which is a series of ancient temples right in the heart of the city, also called Largo Argentina, and we're on our way into the ghetto. This is the old part of the city, and one of the highlights here is the Fountain of the Turtles. This old historic part of town has been very nicely preserved, and it's a great place for walking. Next highlight along the way is San Carlo ai Catinare, a mid-17th century church built in a splendid Baroque and Rococo style. From here we stroll down the Via dei Giubinari, passing many little local shops and cafes to the very friendly outdoor marketplace of the Campo dei Fiori, always a favorite stop on our route. That's the one. This Campo de Fiori is right in the very center of the historical heart of Rome. All around here, just within a few blocks, are many, many beautiful attractions, and the marketplace itself makes a fun stop. You can buy some fresh fruits or souvenirs, you can buy spices and these lovely fresh green olives, like you've never had before at home. And it's a good pit stop. You can sit down at a cafe if you wish. Nice place to spend some time. Later in the afternoon, there's many restaurants that open, and in the evening, it's quite lively as well, with diners and singers and musicians out on the streets. Just a block away is the Piazza Farnese, and then on down through some of the little back streets. Friendly locals greeting us as we go by. There's antique shops and furniture restoration shops here, little neighborhood markets, and another one of the most spectacular churches in the city, the Chiesa Nova. Again, mid 17th century, and done up in a highly Baroque and elaborate style of decor. When you're visiting an important city like Rome, you want to take the time to see it right, and that means doing some walking, as we always do. And that'll take you across the Ponte Sant'Angelo, bridge across the Tiber River that was designed in part by Bernini, who carved these angels, and they're among the most beautiful of all outdoor statues in the city. It leads to the tomb of Hadrian, and these are the kinds of fine details that you're going to miss if you're only in Rome for a day or so on a bus tour passing through town quickly. When we were in Rome 15, 20 years ago, we didn't see half of the things we've seen on this trip already. Mm -hmm. Fabulous.